Hi folks, uh, this is Jason and I hope you're okay today and uh, I just want to share with you um, some important things that I think are really important and I just want to tell you my story and uh, I hope this story that it will be a, a lesson to you and, and help you to think. Um, As you can see there, there is a picture of uh, Guantanamo Bay uh, um, and I would encourage you to read uh, Spengler, uh, The Decline of the West uh, as a book that, in, uh, that, that gives some kind of, maybe give you a bit of intellectual thinking about the issue of the decline of the West. Um, Spengler uh, wrote a book uh, which would be interesting uh, to look at and to study. Um, Spengler's book uh, received unfavorable reviews from most interested scholars even before the release of his second volume. Spengler's veering towards right-wing views in the second volume converted this reception and the stream of criticism continues for decades. Nevertheless, in Germany, the, in, the book enjoyed pop having set sold uh, 100,000. Spengler's ideas became controversial. Uh, one quote, when the first volume of The Kind of the West appeared in Germany a few years ago, thousands of copies were sold. Cultivated European discourse quickly became Spengler saturated. Spengerism uh, spurted from the pens of countless disciples, it was an imperative to read Spengler to sympathize or revolt. It still remains so. Spengler was influenced by Nietzsche and Goth and other uh, philosophers. He had a methodology uh, which can be summed up as follows. Plato and Goth stand from the philosophy of becoming Aristotle to Kant, the philosophy of being. Goth notes and verse must be regarded as the expression of perfectly deaf of metaphysical doctrine. I would not have a single word changed of this. The Godhead is effective in the living, not in the dead, in the becoming and the changing, not in the become and the set fast. And therefore, similarly, the reason is concerned only to strive towards the divine through the becoming and the living and the understanding only to make use of the become and the set fast, uh, set fast letter to Erkerman. This sentence comprises my entire philosophy. That's what Spengler says. So what I'm about to talk to you is, is not a new subject. It's an old subject. Uh, some great thinkers like Spengler have written on it. And so what I'm about to share with you is going to seem strange, surreal, and shocking. And I want you to mirror this video because it's really important. If you believe in the freedom of speech, if you believe in the rights of the individual to have freedom, then you need to um, pass this video on. And it's a very important video in my own thinking and reflection. Now, as you can see, a picture of Guantanamo Bay there. There's a prime example how democracy is in decline in the West. These people who were in the red there don't have any rights whatsoever. Um, it is out of the jurisdiction of the USA and yet it is run by USA United States personnel that's an infringement of those individual people's democratic rights that has been done in a democracy and is a stain on the democratic values of America 
and of the West for allowing this kind of behavior to go on. We've also seen an infringement of democratic rights because there have been leaks by whistleblowers who have told us that America and the United Kingdom and other nations are spying on their, on their own people. That America and the United Kingdom and other nations are siphoning off all the phone calls, multimedia of individual personal homes and investigating all that information and they keep a track of everything that comes in and out of a particular country. These are developments that are very worrying and democracy is in decline. In fact, we're on the verge of democracy. Now, five years ago, I had a nervous breakdown and it was a pretty bad nervous breakdown in the sense that um, I was on medication for about two years. I was a trained um, minister uh, having a degree in theology, experienced minister who had encouraged and taught uh, preachers and uh, I had this breakdown and when I came on YouTube I was reading uh, books by Sam Harris, Richard Dawkins, I was listening to lectures by Christopher Hitchens and I was shocked at the New Atheism it was shocking in its portrayal of religious people. Sam Harris was saying that fundamentalist Christians were dangerous, could be terrorists. Uh, Christopher Hitchens was said that religion poisons everything. Richard Dawkins was saying that if you are a Christian uh, and you teach your children uh, six day creation, that you're, you're almost a pedophile, you're abusing your child. And on top of that, we had these kind of public intellectuals that were being branded about as great intellectuals in the West who were demonizing religious people and Christians in such a way that it was disgusting, that it was in peril in democracy because if this kind of demonization was allowed to go on, then the public would take on board to treat Christians in a in a vile way. On top of these intellectuals on YouTube and the internet was an army of militant atheists that was systematically bullying Christian apologists off YouTube by investigating their private lives and then bullying these apologists, Christian apologists off and it was part of this aggressive militant atheism fueled by the kind of rhetoric of a Hitchens and a Harris and a Dawkins. Now I was shocked by this. I was utterly, utterly shocked at this demonization. And I, I was not at my best to, to enter the fray. I was a broke in my depression and I was I had all sorts of issues and psychological issues and, and motives that sometimes were not pure in the in the mix but uh, there's one thing that I knew that was very very clear and that was this militant atheism was imperiling Western democracy by the demonization and the attack upon Christianity. So I took it upon myself to fight politically this militant atheism. I made video after video, hundreds if not thousands of videos, attacking this militant atheism. Many times I was depressed, many times I had issues in my life and some of my videos were not very good, really bad 
and I deleted them, some of them. Unbeknown to me, these militant atheist groups were saving these videos and they began to save them. It got to a point where I be I was beginning to be effective against these militant atheists. I was beginning to push them back. I was beginning to expose them. I was beginning to show the kind of aggressive tactics that they were doing. But unbeknown to me, there was a backlash preparing. The first backlash um, was the setting up of archive channels without my permission. I'd said that I don't have copyright on my videos. Use my videos to to promote democracy and to promote to promote uh, Christianity. But it was in no way an endorsement of militant groups, militant atheist groups, to take my videos and then to put them in a way that that misrepresents me. But that's what they did. They took my videos and they set up archive channels. And those archive channels got more hits and views than any of my channels. And these archive channels misrepresent my output of what I did. Taking videos that I deleted, I pleaded with these archive channels not to to be up because every time you typed in my name, it would be the archive channels that come up and not my name and not my channels. I even tried to DMCA some of these channels, and the response that I got was threats from these channels. One of these channels in particular made a and I quote, you want a war? That was the quote. And threatened me that if I DMCA'd them, that they would pull any other channels that I had down. Thereby, not only did they take control of my public profile with these archive channels, they also um, took away my, my right to control the input of those archive channels. So the backlash came with these archive channels, which effectively took away my freedom of speech in critiquing atheism. Any video that I would make, they immediately put it on their archive channels, and immediately, whenever was ty anybody was typing in my name, the archive channels. My freedom of speech to criticize militant atheism. They're in one foul swoop. They effectively destroyed my public profile. They took away my freedom of speech in that one area. But it didn't stop there. If that wasn't enough, I had a debate with one of the major uh, players, and I won that debate. At Christmas uh, in at the end of 2000, at uh, the beginning of 2014, a large number of atheists and liberals got together and began to. It was a, it was in effect a cyberbullying campaign. We say that I plagiarized in a debate where the original debate. It's the DPR Jones Jason Burns debate. If you go to that debate, all the sources of the debate are under the video for you to see. All the source material is there. And anybody who knows anything about apologetics will know that the first part who I was using, it didn't need any explanation. But because the atheists were so desperate, especially the militant atheists, to get one on me, they brought all these accusations out, but it was cyberbullying because I didn't have the right to answer back. I wasn't invited on any show. I wasn't given any opportunity to answer at all. So we had New Covenant Group, which is a, a liberal Christian group that were in alliance with these militant atheists. We had militant atheist groups. All attacking me and all isolating me from the conversation. This 
utterly crushed me and devastated me, whereby I made a video haranguing not only New Covenant group, but all the militant atheist groups, and ended up saying one or two things about some militant atheist wife, which I didn't know the full facts. And they spun it out of all proportion as if I was attacking that particular individual when I wasn't. My guns were aimed at the militant atheist in general and specific uh, athe uh, militant atheist men. He spun it out of all uh, proportion. And um, that led to a backlash where many of these militant atheists wanted to de uh, defend the honor of this uh, lady. That led to me getting phone calls of threats to my house, which led me into a deep, deep depression and worrying concerning the threat. So I ended up putting a video up, which I was pretending to. It was not something that I was actually thinking. But I put a video up saying I killed myself. And I put that video up in the hope that the atheist, militant atheist, would leave me alone because the venom and the threats and the abuse that I was getting was so intense I just could not cope with it. Within an hour I realized what a foolish thing I'd done and pulled that video down. But that video was then put on archive channel that they have, a Jason Burns archive channel. And they put that video up and it gave the people the impression that I had actually committed suicide. One individual, a militant atheist gentleman, a leader amongst the militant atheists, saw the video, commentated under the video, but then sent me an email abusing me and attacking me. But this same individual then decided that it was a wonderful opportunity because he knew that I was not serious because I made it clear that I'd pulled the video down and that I was okay. That individual then went and got the police to come and see me the following day, 12 hours after that video. Now all this would not have happened if it wasn't for the cyberbullying right at the beginning of the groups attacking me and not allowing me to have my say and give my answer. If it weren't for the New Covenant group attacking me, if it weren't for Christopher Mort attacking me, if it weren't for many other ath militant atheists as well attacking me, and not giving me the opportunity to have said my view, I would not have gone into the whole spiral that those situations happened. So the police came, and then I had to show them the um, the video, and, and they were shocked to find that the video was not on my channel, that it was on an atheist channel, and they couldn't understand it. And they suggested the best thing to do is stay away from from the from uh, the internet now the point is this is that we're now moving into a whole different set of problems we're not the narrative is no longer me having debates and winning them or me making my silly videos and attacking atheism the narrative now is moving into a whole different sphere we've had threats we've had massive controversy about oh Jason's nasty because he said this we had police coming round and things just moved into a whole new ball game and you think that that would have been it but it it gets worse unbeknown to me this particular militant atheist gentleman who saw himself as now some kind of psychiatrist but has no qualifications in psychiatry then saw fit to contact the police 
they send a report about my so-called mental illness and at the same time then without me realizing it I was asked to go and see my doctor the doctor sent me a letter and I went to see my doctor thinking it was a general checkup and my doctor said to me that I should not make any videos on atheism or I'll be sectioned and I said why she said didn't you want to commit suicide I said no and I had to explain to them that actually I'm quite famous on the internet and there's a running ideological battle between me and some sections of the atheist community and that's where all this is coming from she wrote read a little bit of the report from these police that they got from this individual the report went something like this uh, he has too many books in his room the report also stated you've declared war on atheism I had to say to her well it's ideological I have not said I've declared war on atheism it is ideological war not physical war I said Aaron Rauer who's a famous American atheist he has declared war on me ideologically I have not declared war physically but ideologically the doctor, I said, but you didn't contact me that you were going to talk to me about this. And the doctor said she did and she hadn't. She also agreed that the police should have contacted me concerning what, what had happened. I left that room utterly humiliated. 100% and so shaken up that I was literally my hands were shaking when I was driving my car home I actually told my family what had happened and they were absolutely couldn't believe it thought we'd, we'd we were living in a, a Russian state I have never been to my doctor since and also will have to change my doctor when I have to go and see a doctor I will have to get a new doctor because that doctor broke public trust with me by not informing me why she wanted to see me. Now the, the militant atheists claim that they are trying to were trying to help me mentally, but as I said, they knew for sh absolute sure they were informed why the video was put up at the beginning. Many saw it as an opportunity to uh, anguish and aggravation because the comments under the video were very um, were very psychologically manipulative if you follow the people who make those comments they are often very aggressive militant atheists so then now we're in new territory now there is an individual writing blog posts about my mental illness but it didn't stop there there was then show upon show upon show of militant atheist shows where they would literally talk about Jason Burns' mental illness. So now they they have my archive channel. They, they have archive channels where they put the material where they try and make me look a nutcase. Then they have an individual someone's mental illness and then on top of that they instigate the person's doctor and police against a person's mental illness so-called what all this is doing is actually making me ill it really really made me ill to know that there was an individual writing blog post about mental illness actually gets you depressed <laughs> to know that someone is actually going to uh, get your doctor to see you without your uh, permission or without co contacting your family or without contacting you is actually uh, makes you quite depressed and ill because it's uh, it's an invasion of your privacy this is other people to do the same and write things 
and on the Rational uh, Wiki League, um, they told some of these individuals off, and the Rational Wiki, uh, Wikipedia, sorry, the Rational Wikipedia actually stated that these individuals were cyberbullying, that if there was anything wrong, it's a matter for the police and the medical health professionals. It's not a matter for individual atheists to be writing campaigns against the individual. So the rational uh, Wikipedia actually reprimanded these individuals for doing that and called them out and said they were cyberbullying. But like I said, it didn't stop there. There was week after week these militant atheist groups talking about the person's mental illness, which my mental illness was maybe uh, depression a little bit, and the fact that um, that I, I, I could be addicted to YouTube making video after video. But it didn't require police coming around, it didn't require the uh, seeing the doctor without my permission and it did, certainly did not require um, week after week after week shows being made about someone's mental illness depression which gave the world and the public a wrong impression of me because there was many many videos on the original archive channel that I on the original channel that I had that shows me is perfectly normal and fine that just many of the videos were crazy and silly some uh, I was a bit down but in this whole controversy and all in this whole situation because of the bullying I pulled my channel down which had 3,000 subscribers I lost 2,000 of my videos many of those videos were scholarly that archive, my channel, gave you a, a more rounded view of who I was. It, it, you saw the scholarly side, the Bible teaching side, and the crazy side. But because my channel was taken down, you only got the militant atheist perspective, which was all the shows that they talked about, Jason is mentally ill, all the shows, uh, all the archive channel, and the blog posts from this individual. You incidentally, uh, prior to that, sent me a, a, an email which was quite aggressive and abusive. This individual says that they've explained this away, that he was angry. But at the end of the day, the same individual um, and all these individuals, all these individuals are disingenuous and, and dis dishonest about the slur and the slander about my so-called mental illness. That slander is evident in the fact that the individual who wrote the blog posts has been on shows where he will talk about me, uh, has talked about me incessantly. If that person had any, any true care or honesty for me, they were not, they really genuinely thought I was that bad mentally. Then they would have refrained from talking about me on Google Hangout shows. That shows you the disingenuousness. And then all these groups that did these shows where it was talking about my mental illness, these are the same people that organized, whipped up a frenzy of videos, at least 50 to 60, fake debate challenges. These are the individuals who did a reenactment society and took the mick out of me with 20, 15, 20 people involved in it. These are the individuals as well, some of them, who had a show where they literally got drunk while playing my videos and taking the mick. These are the vid individuals who inspired one individual to come into Manchester and to film me and 
in the most aggressive manner I could ever imagine, specifically tried to cause me a cause a mental breakdown. If you look at the original video of this individual, he mentions the archive channel a number of times, and he knows that that causes me a lot of mental anguish. And he mentioned this quite a few times. And the language that he was trying to use, he was trying to make me snap and and break on camera so he could get it. But actually, what I, what happened? This individual militant atheist actually inspired another atheist, unwittingly inspired another atheist to come and attack me. Because the individual came right up to my face and on the camera you don't actually see the aggression. And the and as he backed away he actually threw a threat and said I will punch you. So these people who have talked about Jason is mentally ill for weeks and weeks and weeks did an inspired shows other shows that contradict what they were saying to talk about weeks and weeks or oh, Jason's mentally ill and then have a drinking fest where you're getting drunk and then mocking the person is not showing that is not being genuine about what you were saying to to uh, to talk about Jason's mental illness and then go in, encourage someone to go into Manchester and film them and throw all accusations out and be aggressive towards them, inspire the public uh, to be aggressive and nearly punch the person is not showing that you genuinely care about the mental illness and the individual and to film me is the same individual as well also who talked about Jason is mentally unbalanced and yet it's the same person who goes into town and does a stunt like that could have sent someone off the rails if they were mentally ill. So again, that same person shows their disingenuous, their dishonesty. So basically, um, basically, um, I'm just tackling the mental illness issue that that the militant atheists concentrated for weeks and weeks on this issue. They put public profile videos up. Uh, they put my archive channels up knowing that a lot of them are crazy videos and you don't get the full force of them and the balance unless you have the scholarly videos. I've taken my main channel down, that was a few months ago, called Atheist Examined. Lost my subscribers, lost my videos and everything. They'd made me look some kind of nasty person because they hyped up the controversy about this individual female. They'd They'd done all this talking about my mental illness, which is just depression, and I get down sometimes. And I'm, you know, a, a bit addictive to YouTube at times. And exploited that for their own propaganda purposes to try and silence the fact that I was calling militant atheism out for a, the anti-democratic process that they they have been doing. Over the last few years, many, many Christian apologists have left YouTube because of these groups. And I was calling these groups out, and they didn't like it. And they prepared the ground. And so now we're in the realm of, we're not talking about militant atheism. In the realm, Jason's voice has been taken away because we've got these archive channels now that are being controlled by the atheists. Jason's main channel has gone, and Jason now is bogged down because all we're doing is talking about his so-called mental illness and making him look a nutter. But they were contradicting themselves because they were doing things on their shows that showed that they didn't care that they were taking the mic. There was one show where one individual atheist said, please stop them. Another atheist also went on and said, please stop, you're bullying, and he was kicked off the show. Another atheist went on and said, look, it's just not on. And he, I don't think he meant this, but he said Jason could end up hurting someone, killing someone, because you're trying to push him over the edge. I don't think this individual meant to say that, really. But 
they were trying to help. They did see that these these individuals were pushing me to the brink with their incessant attack and incessant bullying with their shows week after week after week. Then another individual in their camp, militant atheist camp, um, makes I makes an accusation because I got involved in helping an individual apologist. I didn't know this apologist, but I I did feel and still do that he was this individual was being treated badly by these militant atheists, and so I took it upon myself to defend this person. And Next thing and all, <coughs> I'm being accused of the most horrendous accusation that has no evidence whatsoever. There's been no such evidence provided. If I'd have made the accusation, the but I made I I was accused of certain things and no evidence was provided. And that accusation would be enough to turn anyone insane, um, but the atheist, militant atheists, get away with it. These individuals then, when they do these kind of things, revert back to you know, they'll get Christians on their show and they'll then start talking about philosophy, and everybody's looking on and thinks, "Oh, these are all right. These atheists, they're really nice," but they're not seeing the shenanigans and the the backroom deals and the backroom stuff that they've been doing. Completely destroying someone's public character with accusations that, that are just beyond the Richter scale of accusations. The individual who came on their bike into Manchester throwing up, throwing up accusations where about non-stamp collector and IRONRA and completely misrepresenting the facts in public, presenting other accusations in public that he provided no evidence with, but made those accusations in public which inspired an individual to nearly hit me and punch me. All this in the end was enough to break any person, to really send someone over the hill and again, that comes back to the hypocrisy of these groups. So, we moved from Jason attacking the militant atheist, and now we're into this, it sounds horrendous, it sounds horrible. But that's what you get if you speak out against militant atheism. This is what you get. After the gentleman came down into Manchester on his bike, I was literally for a whole day nearly in tears. I, I, at one o'clock in the evening, I found it hard to hold back the tears. I'd already had a difficult time since Christmas with my auntie going into hospital. I also had last week, the week before, my mum have a heart attack. I even told the individual to leave me alone because of that. So I had enough stress to, for a lifetime. So when I went to bed that following night, I was literally nearly in tears. I was nearly in tears. It didn't, uh, virtually nearly broken me. A couple of days later, I thought I've had some nut job writing blogs about mental illness when they're not, they've not got any qualifications to do so. I've had the atheist and liberal Christian community gang up on me, accusing me without giving me the right to defend myself. I've had eight accusations thrown out that, that no evidence has been provided. I've been demonized as making Nazi salutes and and all sorts of things, which if you know me, I am not in any way far right whatsoever, nor would I ever imply that 
I would not attack an individual who was really ill. And so, when you've had all this, and I believe in free speech and would not have an archive channel against anybody else, when you've had all this done to you, you realize that enough's enough. And so my war, ideological war against militant atheism had to stop. And so a few days later after the gentleman came into town, uh, the atheist fundamentalist, who's now trying to present himself as some kind of cultural intellectual, um, but make no was off the Richter scale for stupidity, madness, and militant atheism. But um, a few days after that event, I decided to pull down my main channel again, Atheist Examined. I pulled it down first time, I lost my 3,000 subscribers, my 2,000 videos, I put it up again. I put a new 500 videos on, a lot of it was about cyberbullying near the end, about 8 or 10 videos, and on top of that, and not, most of my shows that I did were often ambushed by these militant atheists where they jumped on the shows without me actually asking them to come on. And with all this, I decided to pull down again my channel. And with that, I'm now not engaged in any way against militant atheism. I've not been able to go in my own city centre to freely preach because I was so shaken up by this individual's action. It literally shook me up. Uh, mentally and physically, uh, when you've had someone threaten you like I did on that day, and when you had some individual you don't get the full weight of the individual, but the, the individual on the bike was extremely aggress aggressive that day. You do not get the full weight because he's not on the camera. You just see me. But you don't see the, the aggression coming from that individual as clearly. There have been videos made by a Muslim of that time, and I think you might get some indication of, of the individual perspective so have a look around for the videos so after all that police coming around doctor my mum my auntie not being well my mum have an heart attack uh, all these shows about your mental illness then they're just completely being dishonest about it and not being nice and, and contradicting themselves false accusations and then all this stuff where it happened in Manchester I decided to pull down my atheist examine channel and decided that I'm not going to make any videos on atheism militant atheism again by doing that I win by doing that I show the fact that I could not go in my town cent city centre the fact that I have no or, uh, sorry, no channel anymore that gives my opinion. All we have is these archive channels that they have, but we don't have a full channel on atheism by me where I'm exercising my voice against militant atheism. Proves to me and should prove to you that I win the debate on militant atheism. I constantly ask these atheists for academic debate. And it was like literally trying to get blood out of a stone. Because I wanted primarily to discourse and debate. And it was very hard to get them to debate and discuss. They were very happy to jump you on a Google Hangout 10 against 1. They were very happy to gang up on you on a show and talk about your mental illness. But they were not happy about debating. 
in historical Jesus studies and they were not willing to engage in, in debates. Those atheists that tried to and realized that I knew my stuff soon disappeared. There was a time when I used to get a lot of Skype calls from Thunderfoot and Iron Rat and DPR Jones. But the moment they realized that actually I'm not an idiot, actually I do know my stuff on historical Jesus studies, they soon disappeared. But they used to ring me a lot on Skype. So it was very difficult to get them to engage in academic debate. So in the end, I, I pulled down my channel because I thought, well, they're not willing to debate me. There was one or two um, that came forward, such as uh, John McDropout and Deconverted Man wanted to talk about Logi. There was a couple that near the end were willing to come forward. But many sent me these stupid debate challenges. And it was clear that the atheist community generally that were influenced by these atheist fundamentalists were not really t willing to engage in academic debate. There was also a number of atheists um, that were not happy with the way these militant atheists are conducting themselves. And behind the scenes there were times where some famous atheists, some of them fundamentalist atheists, militant atheists, but with a, but but not as not in the same league as these other groups who were a bit more circumspect and a little bit more cultured. Yeah. Privately, and sometimes these groups would cool off. Sometimes. Um, but they had a golden goose and the golden goose was these archive channels and it was a wonderful opportunity to continue the attack and have a laugh at the expense of a Christian apologist so these other atheists that were very famous who spoke to these militant atheists were not listened to as much as they should have been listened to the top and bottom of it is I haven't got free speech anymore. Uh, I am frightened at the moment to go into Manchester for fear of any reprisals. Um, and I have taken down my... Uh, I, I don't want to ever... emotional abuse and attack that was done to me on Saturday, that Saturday. Uh, sorry, that day the atheist came. I never want to experience that again. Um, it was beyond normal. It, uh, even the Muslim said, this is crazy. Even the Muslim said that. There was a Muslim who actually filmed a little bit of it. And even the Muslim said, this is crazy. It was, it was unbelievably crazy from the atheist's end. It, it, it was just madness what this atheist did. I could have been killed on that day because that person was throwing accusations out that an individual could have assaulted me and killed me. The kind of accusations that you throw out that this individual threw out could have been taken by someone in the public and that could have It was absolutely irresponsible and crazy. So I took my atheist examine video down and I felt so much happier and better because I felt I'm not being abused anymore because being abused by these groups did make me, it, 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 it put a horrendous pressure on me. It really, really did. I, I really was nearly... After that visit with the bike, I was nearly cracking up. Like I said, on the night, I was nearly, I was in tears. I, I, well, I was holding back the tears because I was so shaken up. And so a couple of days later, I took 
I took my um, atheist examine channel down and I thought well they can't now attack me the way they used to do because I am not going to be attacking militant atheism they can't stop me from preaching the word of God they can't stop me from teaching the Bible but all I'm saying is my freedom to be able to critique militant atheism is effectively now gone I don't have a channel anymore to be able to say my point of view to present my public profile the way I want to as I used to it's all gone the public profile that you see now is principally what the atheist have got these archive channels I have other channels but they in no way have the same um, influence in terms of my public profile as these archive channels so my f free speech is effectively gone in these in that area now these individuals are very clever and very crafty uh, the individual who's been blogging about my uh, mental illness is very 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 clever very very crafty and will present it as oh I was trying to help the individual the person who came into Manchester is very clever very crafty will present it as oh I was exposing this liar or whatever um, some of the individuals with the false accusations and all the rest of it very very clever and will do shows as if there's some kind of balanced intellectual having interviews with people and talk about philosophy and everybody will look at that and say well Jay mm, I don't know if we believe you or not because these people are very very well here's the deal here's the deal whose side do you get to see whose voice are you getting to hear because my channel that I had atheist examined is gone it's gone my voice is gone the only voice that you now have about militant atheism is the atheist voice and the way they have my videos the way they've manipulated those videos without giving them the correct context without giving without my permission they don't have my permission whatsoever to have those videos it is my express wish that the atheists pull down the three archive channels that they have. But it's their voice I mean, that they are in control of and that they propagate about me. Now that is a direct attack on freedom of speech and democracy. I might have said underhanded things sometimes and hard things against atheist and atheism and I want it on record that I was never attacking atheism generally my beef when I was on the internet was militant atheism this militant atheism that will take away people's freedom of speech and we've seen that recently I can't go into my own city and I've taken down my atheist channel so that, that's an infringement of my rights, my freedom, by these groups, who then try and switch it and play the emotional game of, oh, well, the guy's meant to uh, form the police, therefore, um, you know, he can't say anything about atheism. These are the same people that will have a show the following week where they're mocking and taking the mick out of me. So it's completely dis disingenuous. And dishonest tactic. So, at the end of the day, um, I'm happy that I'm not involved anymore. I, I think that I did my spin. I I said what I had to say. I'm much happier now, staying away from these kind of groups. I have been contacted by more friendly or atheist groups who do want me to talk to them and after I've had a long break of a few weeks or even a month uh, from uh, atheists generally I will take some 
and uh, I will look forward to coming back and talking with these atheist groups who do want a conversation and don't advocate the kind of tactics that some of these atheists have done. So I really, really appreciate that and I look forward to meeting these atheists and I look forward to engaging with them. But I am so glad now that I'm not engaged in taking on militant atheism because it nearly, it nearly, they nearly destroyed me uh, mentally with the abuse. And I'm glad I'm out of it. I'm glad I'm not involved in it anymore. And also, I need a break from YouTube. I have been on for a long time. Um, so. You know, I look forward to to that break. Uh, I've not I've not been involved with these groups, militant groups, uh, uh, again, or or plan to in any way. And I feel so much happier and, and so much better. But the point is that I did try to tackle the militant atheist, and in the end, I lost my own freedom of speech. And to me, that's a symptom of our Western democracy. That there are groups like this, subversive groups, that can operate in this way, sophisticatedly, very clever, completely decimate and destroy someone's public character. Uh, and if people can do that within a democracy, it shows you how weak democracy is. Uh, if any atheist out there can get these archive channels shut down, then I would be very grateful if you do did get them shut down because they, I don't mind atheist having an archive channel, but channel if they consult with me and work with me, and that every video that they have is in context. I don't mind them having an archive channel if they consult with me and talk with me, and that my side of things is fairly represented and that I'm fairly represented and the individuals who were running those channels are responsible people but I don't it is my public request and I request this from the police I request it from the police in America and the, and the United Kingdom I, I request it from politicians and I request it from the atheist leadership of all the shows on the internet, it is my request that those archive channels be taken down. It is my request because they have taken away my freedom of speech. Because I'm not allowed to mention anything about it. This kind of abuse. And this abuse comes from these groups that feed off and work with these archive channels. And you have a responsibility as an atheist community to call out cyberbullying. You have an, a responsibility to say to the individual who's been writing blogs about me to stop it, that they are not qualified, that Jason has friends in the atheist community, and if he's got mental issues, they can go and talk to him. And if there's any issue in my life, um, Aussie um, and one or two other people, atheists, know me, and they are they have if they want to talk to me, they can do. But no atheist has a right to write blogs about my mental illness unless they are qualified. I, I get depressed sometimes. No atheist has a right to do that. The atheist community should speak out against this individual and tell them to stop it. The atheist community should speak out against this individual who came into Manchester on a bike. I could have been severely damaged physically on that day. This individual is lucky that I've not pressed charges against him. I wouldn't do that because I don't agree with doing things like that. I don't, I don't want to cause anybody else any problems. But the individual who came on a bike in Manchester broke the law on a number of occasions and that individual was extremely irresponsible that individual should be told that and it should not go 
uh, unnoticed by people on the internet from the atheist side that that behavior was irre irreprehensible and irresponsible. The individual who's made the accusation that one of their family members, a child, has been hurt because of me, that individual needs to apologize or at least needs to provide evidence. You can't make those accusations and then allow those accusations to be put in the public domain because if you're doing that then you're going to lead to me being harmed, you're going to lead to me being assaulted because of the accusations that you've made and it's irresponsible of you to do so. And because of those accusations and because of what happened on Saturday I am not able to go into my city centre at the present time. So that is taking away my freedom of speech. So the atheist community online have a big responsibility to show that they are committed to democracy. I am committed to democracy because I could have taken this atheist to court for what they did. But I'm not going to do that because I don't believe in that. I don't believe in persecuting individual people. I don't believe in getting one up on people like that. But that individual took away my freedom of speech in Manchester. I will go back in Manchester, but it will be a long time before I get the confidence to be able to go back. But the atheist community have a big responsibility to stand up for democracy. And you have a big responsibility to stand up and say enough's enough that for whatever faults Jason Burns has, he has a right to go to his city centre and preach without being harassed. If you want to call out Jason Burns, then go and take him for a pint and have a debate and discussion with him. But don't go down inciting people, even if you didn't mean it to nearly end up in violence. It was still irresponsible of you. Don't be going doing that. Go and talk to the guy in the pub. If you've got accusations against Jason that are really, really serious, then keep it quiet and go to the police. Don't make a big drama out of it and make it in public, because if you do, the guy could be assaulted. The atheist community have a responsibility to stand up for democracy and free speech. And you have a responsibility to Jason Burns' democracy, democratic free speech. And one or two atheist groups have got in contact with me and they've made it clear to me that they do not agree with the kind of behaviour that's gone on against me. And they've made it clear that they want me part of the conversation. They've made it clear that they want to hear my voice and discuss about historical Jesus studies or whatever other ideas that I have. They've made it clear that they feel that I have something to give in the debate and discussion and that gives me great heart and great cheer. It gives me great heart and it gives, it gives me great cheer. Like I said, these individuals who went over the bounds, I forgive them and I forget and I want you to forgive them and I want you to forget. Individuals we can meet in a pub one day in Manchester and have a pint together and just laugh this whole thing off. But it's no laughing matter if I have had to close the channel down because I feel that my voice in that area is too difficult to speak in that area. And that's a responsibility that you have to address as atheists, whether militant or, or not. So that's about atheism um, and my story about where I'm at. I think it, it's been good for me to get away from this group, these groups. I'm much happier and I, I'm really back now. I'm, 
I've been able to relax. I've made a few videos on other topics, but I've been able to really, really relax and just chill out. So, you know, I feel refreshed in that area. Um, I do recognise I need to stay away from YouTube for a while. That I have been unbalanced. I have been uh, addictive and things like that. I know that. And, uh, you know, my sister uh, has said the same. And, 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 and um, I, I know that and I need to do that. Um, and I have been doing. I don't make videos like I used to. And um, I do. I do enjoy doing the scholarly stuff. I do enjoy making videos. Um, but yesterday I was out in another city. I was doing evangelism. I spent the whole day out. So I am being productive and and stuff like that. But I do feel that. It, it, it's very easy. I I know that. Some of these atheist groups feel embattled in America, that they're outnumbered in America. And I can understand why they, they push and push and push. And I can understand that many of my videos will get them angry. I can understand that. But I want Christians and atheists to realize that my issue was never atheism. I never really had an issue with atheism. Whenever I was making videos and commentating on atheism I was thinking more in terms of the Hitchens the Harrises the Dawkins it was a kind of militant atheism that I was taking on uh, but I can understand that many atheists even these other atheists would get angry and upset at the things I was saying but I only said it because I felt my and that's why I was doing it I wasn't the best at it I wasn't well at times because I was depressed sometimes and I was unbalanced at times doing too many videos all the time I lost my temper a few times I shouldn't have done and I and I, and I take that on board and I apologize for those things but my genuine desire was to take on something that I felt was a danger to democracy now you might turn around to me and say well you're a bigot you're a you're a you're homophobic, you're this, that, or whatever. Well, that's okay. But at least you've got a channel that you can say that about me. But I haven't got a channel that I can say things about you. And there's the difference. Again, you've got a channel that you can use to critique and attack me. But I have not got a channel to use to critique and, and, and attack, if I wanted to, atheism. And there's the rub. You have the freedom in that area, I don't. Now I don't think this issue is going to be addressed by the atheist community. I don't think you're going to take the archive channels down. I don't think you're going to do that. I don't think these individuals will stop in terms of their program against me, um, whatever in the future, I don't know. Um, but whatever the case, I'm not involved in militant atheism anymore. I'm just preaching the Bible and I'm teaching apologetics and I, I will take a break from YouTube and I will come back, I will do my preaching videos and I'll just get on. But always remember that if I do go on some atheist shows, I will remind people. I won't mention militant atheism, but I will remind them and say, you do realize I don't have a channel now on atheism. And I'll just gently remind people that I don't have freedom of speech in that area. But I will appre I do appreciate some of the atheist groups that did contact me recently and invited me on their shows. Uh, some of these are well-known atheists, famous atheists, and I appreciate that they have got in touch and that they are supportive of me having a voice. And um, I hope in a few weeks' time, months' time, that I come back and I, we can talk about historical Jesus studies and philosophy and stuff like that. 
And for me, I'm just telling you this story because my channel's down and I want you to know my side because I don't have a channel. But it's in no way, I don't, I don't want you to think that I'm, I'm trying to get at this guy on the bike. I don't want, I, I hope he's happy. I hope he has a great life. Uh, or the person who threw accusation at me, or, or um, the person who's been blogging about my mental illness, or whatever. I haven't got it in for them. I don't, I don't wish them any harm or anything. I think I just want them to be happy and blessed. But it's only fair if my channel's gone down that you get my side of things. It's only fair that my voice is heard. And I just think it's a symptom of Western democracy. I think it's it's a case of might is right. It's a case of those groups who were able to uh, savvy on the internet and work together, plug together, can silence somebody else's free speech. And we see that on a larger scale with politicians and we've seen it with these militant groups. And uh, I just wanted people to know that as far as I'm concerned, that I don't blame all atheists. I, I do think there are many decent atheists out there. But I do think that... I, I don't have the confidence in democracy uh, at all. I think democracy is a very um, fragile thing, and I think it's declining. And uh, I think um, we see that all over the place these days. Um, so those are my thoughts, anyway. Um, like I said, I'm not, my channel's down, so people can say whatever they want, but at the end of the day, my voice is gone. My ideas about atheism and about how I see things has gone in that area. Um, but in an ironical way, I'm much happier. Um, the stress levels now have gone. I don't feel stressed anymore. Because the the tension, the mental tension that I was I was I was really being pounded quite a lot being targeted by these groups. It, it was a big pounding that I took recently. And like I said, I, I want to say that I made mistakes. I'm not saying I was perfect. I shouldn't have lost my temper with the lady that I did, said. I, I shouldn't have said some of the things that I said about Aaron Ra and, uh, and John Stamp Collector. I didn't say the things that the person on the bike said, but I shouldn't have said them. said other things that I said. Um, you know, and I made mistakes, and I didn't do things in the right way. Uh, it was not loving, uh, and uh, it was excessive. It was many, many videos, and there was an unbalance there. And at times, I was not well, uh, not not as bad as this individual makes. And and there was a time where I did need to take a break, and I, and I do need to take a break, and. And so, in a way, all this works out for good. Um, I just hope that in a few weeks and months' time, preach and teach the Bible on YouTube, and I just hope that all these people, militant atheists, I just hope that we can build bridges and be friends, genuine friends, and also to all the other atheist groups and some of the atheist groups that have invited me that we could start again. Uh, I know that's going to be hard for a lot of people to put the past behind. But I hope that I'm asking, I suppose in a way I'm asking as well for these groups, militant groups, uh, they might not see themselves as that, but I'm asking the atheist community as a whole to give me a chance to forgive me for any mistakes that I've made uh, and to give me a chance 
in the future to get to know you as friends and to to talk to you on a one-to-one -one basis in a friendly way w with respect uh, and to engage with each other with respect and I'm asking the atheist community to give me that chance I know that a couple of atheist groups have contacted me and but I hope I could have a wider dialogue with atheism in the future and come on shows and bring to you the reading and the scholarship that I'm going to be doing in the next few weeks and months ahead and, and give me a chance to prove myself to you that, I, that I, I have got things to say if you would only let me come and talk with you and I hope that after I've been on one or two shows that you invite me to other shows um, and I hope this issue about these archive channels can be resolved and I hope that made ahead because it, in the end I don't think these individual militant groups to be honest really really want to be tainted with that and it's not in their interest to be tainted with that so it's in everybody's interest that we try to work together that we try to build bridges that we try to be fair to one another and try to listen to one another and so I hope that there might be a change in the atheist community when I come back of a desire to engage and to debate and discuss with me I'll be bringing to the table a passion for history and a passion for philosophy and a passion for theology that's what I'll be bringing to the table and I'll be very interested to know what you bring to the table democracy can only be healthy if there's dialogue genuine honest dialogue and respectful dialogue and I'm committed to that and I want to I want to endorse that and I want to be part of that and uh, again I apologize to the atheist community for bashing atheism even though I was bashing militant atheism but I apologize that I bashed atheism incessantly for three four years and I really apologize that I went overboard on it and was unbalanced and I apologize for that and I would ask please forgive me because I didn't realize the full extent of perhaps the trauma that I was causing a number of atheists who were seen in atheism but I genuinely did it because I felt there was an issue with this militant atheism I'm sorry for losing my temper sometimes I'm sorry for being, being angry I'm sorry for some of the underhanded things that I said and I apologize for that so from my side um, I'm committed to democracy I believe in freedom of speech I believe in dialogue and discussion and I hope that in the future that atheists will engage with me and dialogue with me um, and that we can build up some really good friendships and, and genuine relationships so the balls in your court uh, there's no point in waging a war against me in any way ideologically or doing the kind of tactics that you've been doing because I'm not going to give you the opportunity to do that because I won't be making videos against atheism so the old ways the old tactics of dealing with Jason are not going to work anymore I'm not going to give you the opportunity to be able to do that but I just wanted to give you my opinion my voice uh, of what's said again I don't wish any harm on any individual atheist um, or militant atheist who has caused me unending stress the last since Christmas I don't wish anybody I would 
would never take, prosecute anybody or anything, because it's not in my nature to do that. I uh, would never want anybody to be so publicly humiliated that they could never be on YouTube again. But I, I just ask, fair's fair, and let's just be fair, and let's realise that that if we don't dialogue and discuss, and if there isn't the freedom of speech, then the many videos that are made against militant atheism perhaps need to be stayed up, need to be kept up, kept up because it needs to be shown that there isn't the freedom of speech. But if the atheist community online move into an area of dialogue and discussion, then um, my videos will be seen as a monument of extremism. But if the atheists keep the videos and don't debate me, then my videos will have been prophetic about what was going to happen in democracy in the future. Or maybe the truth is halfway, a bit on both sides. On an aside, I think that as a Christian, I we had the local elections and we had the European elections. Um, and I voted for my local MP, who's a Liberal Democrat. The Liberal Democrats, but because I, we have an unusually good MP, who does a lot of good work locally. But then I vote, I voted UKIP for the European election. But I have to say that. I'm disillusioned with politics, I'm disillusioned with democracy, I'm disillusioned with the hypocrisy of America. I love America, I love Americans, but I, it, the hypocrisy of um, the way America is calling out Russia and uh, when really it's all about the oil and the gas. I'm disillusioned with politics because I don't think the politicians in power in our country are reflecting our views uh, of the ordinary people. And I feel that the freedom of Christianity is, is being curtailed slowly but surely in the West. I don't think Christian freedom is going to be here for much longer. I think freedom of Christian for Christianity and freedom of worship and freedom to believe your own Christian faith, I believe, is being taken away by our own democracy. And um, that's what I think. I think I've come to a point of healing in my life and I feel I've come to a point of full circle where I'm now going to be returning back to my roots. I'm now going to be preaching more. If I do come to YouTube I will be preaching more and talking about lectures and, and preaching and teaching the Bible. Um, I basically um, I just wanted to tell my story of why I pulled down my channel on atheism and I just wanted to give it give give my side of the story because we've all got the atheist side because they've got all these archive channels and all the all the videos that they make about me and stuff like that and I just wanted my my position known. Another good video to watch is the wounded prophet that goes into a lot of the detail. But thinking about things, you know, sometimes things have to come to a head. 
And in a funny way, this has brought me back to my own calling, um, which is to preach the Bible, uh, to preach the Word of God. So I hope there's no controversy from this video because I don't want any controversy. This video's not been made for controversy. The video's just been made to, to say how I feel and what I think and and um, I will not be getting involved in any controversy or any drama of any sort whatsoever. Um, I just want to quietly rest and then quietly come back and do some videos preaching and from time to time have a debate with atheists like an academic debate and maybe from time to time appear on a, a, an atheist show and have a genuinely with respect to, to those who want to give me respect as a Christian. I don't bear any grudges to any individual on YouTube and I wish everybody on YouTube uh, a blessing and that goes to those who who perhaps are not on my side in any way. So, is democracy declining? You answer the question. I think it is. I'm going to go and uh, wish you all the best. Um, if I can't have freedom of speech in the area of atheism, if those ICAV channels are still up and stop my freedom of speech, if there's continual uh, taking away of my freedom where I can't even dialogue or debate with atheists, if I can't even go into my town in the future, then uh, then we're definitely in decline <laughs> as a democracy. I think things are going to change in the future. I think there'll be opportunities to talk with atheists. Uh, what happens when I go back into Manchester? Um, I don't know. Um, but that will be for some time, yeah. And um, at the moment, concentrate on on my relationship with God and um, my faith, and um, take my eyes off atheism at the moment. But I wanted to tell you my story of why my freedom has been lost in that area at the present time. I have a funny feeling that there'll be some atheists will make will 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 speak out and say that he needs he should have his freedom of speech. He should be allowed to have a channel critiquing atheism. So here's the question to the atheist community. I ask all these atheists to answer this question. Drop out. Alex Borton, Jim Gardner, Cliff Jumper, Fiona, um, Thunderfoot, Iron Ra, DPR Jones, Hogtie Champ, uh, King Crocodile, Live Life 8072, Negation of P, Essence of Thought, uh, Bionic Dance, No Plum 99, um, Atheism TV, Saiten uh, Theist. I ask every single one of you this question. Should Jason Burns be allowed to have a channel on atheism and to critique atheism or not? At the present time he doesn't have a channel that operates where he regularly, weekly makes a video critiquing atheism and he will not be having a channel 
to do so. But if he was to desire to do so, does he have the freedom to do that? Because at the moment, I don't have the freedom. That's why I close my channel down. And if I don't have the freedom, is that not a symptom of the decline of Western democracy? I'll leave that with you to discuss and debate privately or publicly in the next three, four, five weeks. And I'll be interested to hear what all of you think. Also, I ask, a, you know, atheists of experience, non stunket Lecter, Matt Delunty, I even asked Richard Dawkins, I even asked Dan Barker, and I even asked, um, uh, what's his name, um, Sam Harris, Daniel Dennett, um, David Silverman, uh, the Free Thought Foundation, or whatever it's called. Does Jason Burns have the right to a channel? where he can critique atheism or no he hasn't got the right at the moment um, well over to you I'm not going to be doing any videos on atheism again and if I do get to engage with atheist online it will be because you've invited me on a show to debate with you or discuss with you but that won't be for a, quite a number of weeks now alright so thank you for listening and God bless to everybody and uh, I'm now going to get back to my old life of preaching the Word of God and take care and God bless you please mirror this video uh, if you want uh, to encourage democracy and freedom of speech um, be interesting to uh, see your dialogue and discuss here's the question do you think here's some questions do you think that the modern atheism is taking away people's freedom of speech do you think the modern atheism is bullying Christians and Christian apologists off YouTube do you think there is cyber bullying in the atheist community and Christian community online uh, do you think that Christians are cyberbullying uh, online? Do you think that Christians have taken away uh, atheist freedom of speech? Are there any Christian groups that have targeted atheist apologists and silenced them? Maybe it's the other way around. Maybe it's the Christians doing it to the atheists. I don't know. What do you think? Do you think that democracy is in decline? Do you think Western democracy is in decline? Do you think Western democracy is healthy and strong? Do you think religion is perfectly free in America and in the UK to, to uh, function as religious communities? Or do you think there are restrictions on religious freedom? Do you think that Western democratic leaders are leading democracies in a way that is making democracy healthy or is actually bringing democracy in decline is democracy strong ideologically do we have good foundations in ideological thought about democracy or is democracy needing to be reevaluated with new parameters today how is the internet aiding or not aiding western democracy what is the role of the individual in freedom of speech what is the role of community in freedom of speech what is the role of the internet in freedom of speech how can freedom of speech be conducted on the internet in such a way that promotes democracy and not damages it what criteria what things do we need to know about or to uh, to have if we're going to be healthy and effective in being stewards of democracy all these are questions that this video um, can promote um, 
and uh, a whole discussion and dialogue and debate. Uh, I hope Muslims, Jews, Hindus, uh, Christians and atheists and agnostics uh, enter the debate and the discussion. And I hope it sets a dialogue and discussion on the online. What do you think of it as a journalist? What do you think as a politician? What do you think as a as an artist? What do you think as the public, as a teacher, as a uh, everyday person on these questions? As for my journey, my journey has full come full circle. I have, uh, because of this nearly breaking me, it's made me I feel much more healed and much more balanced and stronger today. Because I've found my inner self, I've found the inner core of me, I've found who I really am. I found that my calling is to preach the word of God. My calling is not to defend democracy, it's not to fight militant atheism, it's to preach the word of God. And I want to take the opportunity to say again that I am sorry if I let the Christians and atheists down in any way. I really am sorry but today is the day I am today is who I am today I am Jason Burns and I still am proud that I did for all my craziness and all my mistakes I was standing up as far as I was concerned to what I thought was a militant atheism and still do that was taking away people's freedom of speech. Was I wrong in that assessment? Was I right in that assessment? Does it need to be? Who knows? Well, feel free to make your comments under this video and um, yeah. So I hope uh, this video promotes discussion and debate and um, practical uh, changes as well both in my life and in the life of other people as well so thank you for listening and God bless you